Hey, Willow. Yes? Look up. Look down. Look all around. Your pants are falling down. <laughs> we used to tell that joke when we were kids. It's not really a joke. It's not. It's not a joke. It's just a thing you make people do. Uh, <laughs> and then you laugh at the fact that their pants are falling down, but they're not falling down. You li it's a lie. But it was a trick. And that is thematically appropriate. You know what else is thematically appropriate? What? Well, we just had cake, which is a treat. Which is a treat! So you might as well say that today was all about... Tricks and treats. And how is that appropriate? It's Be Halloween. It's Halloween time, everyone! Halloween town, we're the Halloween clowns. We are clowns. We are clowns, we're ridiculous human beings, and today we are watching... Nightmare Before Christmas. You had to think about it? <laughs> I want, I That's all to, we've been talking about. I wanted to say trick or treat, which doesn't make any sense. Completely different kind of movie. Um, uh, I'm also 23 years old now. You're 23 years old. <laughs> when we started this movie, you were but a teen. This movie? I mean, this show. You were but a teen. <laughs> uh, started off years ago with... I was like 16? Uh, I think so, yeah. We started off years ago with uh, uh, that... Uh, Kronos, yes. the first Guillermo del Toro movie. Uh, and then we started Ecstasy of Influence with Haxon. Haxon. And now it's years later. We're still going. We're still going strong. We've only got like a few movies left on this list. A couple years worth of movies. Yep. <laughs> and uh, and we'll be done. Uh, but yes, this we have. So this is the Ecstasy of Influence. I'm Phil. And I'm Willow. And it's, it's Del, Del Toro, Toro time. time. It's Del Toro time. We're on the Ecstasy of Influence, Guillermo Del Toro's list of most influential films in his career as as of like 2018. And uh, we're at The Nightmare Before Christmas. Henry Selleck's The Nightmare Before Christmas, but for legal reasons, uh, Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, I believe that they had to call it Tim Burton's Night Before Christmas, not because of what Tim Burton wanted, but in order to like sell the movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, Disney was like, we're calling it Tim Burton's and, uh, and Henry Selleck was never happy about that. I wouldn't be. And even though I will say this movie, as much of a Henry Selleck film as it is, it's a very Tim Burton movie. I mean... I mean, he wrote yeah. the story. He designed the characters. It's got the swirly swirls and the stripes. It's got Danny Elfman and all of Tim Burton's favorite cast members. Chris Sarandon. Uh, you just listed a bunch of people who are in. Paul Rubin sits in it. <laughs> have you ever seen this movie before? Yes, of course you have, yes. because you're alive. Yeah, because I'm alive and I'm your child. Yes, uh, the thirty-year-old movie as of last year. Only I, seven years older than I am. 1993, thirty years old. Uh, came out when I was in high school. We'll wouldn't talk about that later. It be Thirty-one years old. Now it's 31 years old. It's 30, it was 30 years old a year ago. <laughs> Had its big 30th anniversary. Can you believe, though, that it's that popular? Like, when I was a kid, if a movie from, like, the 50s mm -hmm. was still this popular, we would be like, what's going on? Hasn't anything new come out since then? But this just stuck in the zeitgeist somehow. Well, it wasn't popular when it first came out. No, not at all. So it had to have its resurgence at some point. Not a successful you film. You want to know how I know it wasn't popular when it first came out? How? Because two girls who liked you hated it. Two girls who liked me hated it. No, one girl I liked and dated hated it. Mm -hmm. uh, one other girl who I dated really liked it, and she thought the other girl was ridiculous for not oh, liking okay. it. Oh, uh, okay. The girl who did not like it, her favorite movie, though? Uh... Oh, uh, Edward Scissorhands. Edward Scissorhands, which makes the whole I hate Nightmare Before Christmas so odd. Yeah, I took her to see it, and she was like, wow, that was a waste of time. What a stupid, gross movie. I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah, this came out, like, right at the height of my, like, Oingo Boingo love, mm -hmm. right at the height of my Danny Elfman fanatic. I was a senior in high school. Uh, it, it, nothing like this existed. Disney didn't think it was going to do very well. They had no idea what to do with it. They didn't market it at all. They're, I think... No, that's not true. Burger King had Nightmare Before Christmas wristwatches. It's like, "'Twas the night before Christmas, uh, and all something something, to like six or four spooky watches at Burger King was the commercial. I just remember because uh, Mystery Science Theater would always have commercials for it. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a four spooky watches from Burger King <laughs> featuring Jack the Skeleton King or something. And uh, that was it. Like, that was it. You could buy a few, like, figures... 
There was a Sally doll that got mm -hmm. sold that my friend David gave to our friend Karen, and then she got rid of it like after six months. And like, it was such it's such a rare doll though that it was worth like two hundred dollars even before the year was out. Like it was, the marketing was bad. Yep. Uh, so you couldn't buy shirts, you couldn't buy toys. It just there was nothing out there. And not uh, anymore. Not anymore. Oh boy, this movie, once it found its crowd, it found mm -hmm. its crowd. And by its crowd, I mean mall goths. And I say that in the most like caring meaning of the word, mall Hot goth. topic. Hot topic kids. All of a sudden, it's like a cartoon about skeletons. I can wear black clothes with skeletons. Sign me up. About a man who doesn't feel understood. Also musical theater nerds. Also musical theater nerds. Also uh, new wave rock and roll 80s mm -hmm. nerds like me. Oh, you like Doingo Boingo? Well, what if the Oingo Boingo guy was singing the lead in your movie? <laughs> what if he played a skeleton man not uh. for the first time in his life? And then, of course, Tim Burton followed it up. Followed it up with uh, trying to do The Corpse Bride, which was kind of his attempt to recapture the magic, which mm -hmm. you're a fan of The Corpse Bride. I love The Corpse Bride. Uh, wasn't it? That was a, not a successful film. And then Henry Selleck followed this up with James the Giant Peach, uh, which is a which is considered a classic in its own right. But is... The Corpse Bride wasn't successful. No. Everybody I've spoken to has loved that movie. Everyone I've spoken to loves Nightmare Before Christmas. That wasn't successful. Yeah, that's so, you know, it just it takes a while for things to catch on. And things have their fans. The... Corpse Bride movie inspired one of my Halloween costumes when I went as the Undead Bride. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, you know, big movie for you. That's not what we're talking about, though. This is 1993's Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, directed by Henry Selleck. Willow, are you ready to watch this movie that's going to be incredibly difficult for me to edit because it's got so much music in it? Yep. All right. We have our Blu-ray up. We are ready this to movie start. This is so short. This movie is very short. Hour and 16 minutes in and out. Here we go. Let's You're go. Let's go. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> now, if this movie was made today, the Disney castle would, of course, be covered in, like, vines or something. They'd have it, like, all spooked out. Yep. Not so at the time. They were like, we don't trust this movie. We don't trust, we don't trust Tim Burton, former employee of Disney. We don't trust this movie. Walt Disney's presence. No presence from him. He's long dead. And all the mall goths are like, woo, Tim Burton. We saw Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and there were mall goths there. Yeah. Except they were old people. I want to go to Easter land. I've never seen this in my dreams. I don't want to go to Thanksgiving land. It's all gravy. <laughs> it's all gravy and stuffing. That's a great looking jack-o'-lantern, by it the way. Is, yeah. Okay, get ready to dance. Here we go. <laughs> Dancing to the song, Tim Burton music. God, I love this movie so much. We're just dancing. Two-headed creature we never see again. So a lot of questions are raised in the This Is Halloween song that never get answered. <laughs> that have bothered me since I was a kid. Uh, the blending of live action and animation here, though, I love. Yes. I think they did this live. I think that these were, like, transparent plates. Okay. So this... Okay, thing hiding under your bed. Thing hiding under your stairs. Okay, things kids are actually afraid of, yep. right? Yeah. Just I wanna I wanna put a pin in that. So these are the Vampire Brothers. Yes. They're a major part of a later comic book series. All right. Uh, the guy who does the voice of the mayor, he was in Beetlejuice. Okay. As Otho, he's late lately passed. Cat. Wait, is this the melty face monster? No. Right there. There he is. Yep. So, my question is, Halloween Town. Yeah. Christmas Town's all building up to Christmas. Halloween's all building up to Halloween. Okay, here. Not a fear that most kids have. Except until they watch this movie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, clowns. Okay, and then, right here. Oogie Boogie Shadow on the Moon. Okay, so the thing under the stairs, thing under the bed, Oogie Boogie. Are they, do they work not only on Halloween? Like, are they just out working all the time? Maybe. Because the thing under your stairs isn't a specifically Halloween fear. Maybe they, they only come out on Halloween to reinforce the idea. <laughs> to reinforce the concept? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, don't forget to be afraid of the thing under the stairs. 
Because if you're just always under the stairs, the kid's not going to be... Also, there's only one of them, so they have to go... Maybe they work all year, but they only show up one day. Maybe. But they can't show up one day per kid, because there's more than 365 days. (laughs) I will say, I will say that I am the who when you call who's there, probably my favorite line in the movie. Yeah. That's a good fear. Mm -hmm. Also, is this a real horse? We don't know. He never comes back. I like the one-eyed mummy boy. I love the liquid effect. Yeah. Halloween Town, not as populated as you think it is, though. No? I mean... You kind of meet everybody, and there they are. The thing about, like, Thanksgiving, Easter, Halloween, is that most of the, like, prep prep is on the other... is on humans. Right, right. There's no Thanksgiving spirit that comes and, like, brings you your turkey. Like, Christmas, logistically, is a nightmare for uh, non-humans. Yeah. Right. Christmas, you have to bring one, you have to bring things to everyone. Yeah. Halloween is kind of up to the people who want to celebrate Halloween. Yeah. I mean, Christmas is too, but like, yeah. there's a main character with an obligation. This is just kind of like general spookiness. Yeah. What's this guy's deal too? Dr. Finkelstein? Yeah. How did he, how did he hurt his leg? Is he paralyzed? But also like, like what's his deal with Sally? He built her. He created her. He's her creator. Right. F to be a lover? We don't know. We have no idea. A daughter? We don't know. Okay, right there. Vampires for the most blood drain. So they're actually killing people. Yeah. They say, that's our job, but we're not mean. But, but then the vampires people. are clearly out there murdering humans. And what's with these guys? These guys are the best. Thanks, Bone Daddy. <laughs> do, do you think that in this town... If a scare goes out of fashion, they just kind of drift aimlessly. Probably. They become beggars like those guys. Yeah. Do you think these graves actually belong to people? I was going to say, so are people actually dead in Halloween Town? Like, is this where the citizens are originally buried? Or who's dead in Halloween Town? It's just decoration. Jack says, since I am dead, we know he's dead. But is he like born dead, I guess? Are these characters manifestations of our imagination? Well, clearly there's a dog corpse there. Right. Okay. Why is that guy not alive? Yeah. Who's that guy? Where are the gargoyles? People are scared of gargoyles. Do you think there's a weeping angel? Why did Jack's voice suddenly change when he started singing? (laughs) Why did Chris Sarandon turn into Danny Elfman? Chris Sarandon, however, does his own singing in the video game. But he's doing a Danny Elfman impression. It's kind of neat. I see. Yes, in uh, in in Nightmare Before Christmas, uh, Oogie's Revenge, I think it's called, which is a musical game. Yeah. With original songs. Do you know how many high school age guys sang this song? A lot. A lot. A lot sang this song. My friend Shannon sang this song in college. Mm-hmm. He wanted to be Jack Skellington so bad. He wanted to be Jack Skellington and Spider Man. Understandable. I can relate to both of those things. I'll say this, uh, Zero's nose, being mm-hmm. a pumpkin, being a jack-o'-lantern, was not obvious in the theater. Yeah. The image was blown out enough every time I saw this in the theater originally that mm-hmm. it, I, it wasn't until I saw the merchandise that I realized his oh. nose was a, was a jack-o'-lantern. I really like Fiona Apple's cover of Sally's uh, song. Fiona Apple is kind of a Sally, a real-life mm-hmm. Sally. She may have been stitched together from other people's bodies. We don't yeah, know. We have no idea. This is a great effect right here. Best moment of the movie. It should have been a belch, though. (laughs) So is Sally created to love? Does she have free will? Is it appropriate that the king of Halloween Town is in love with her? Is he in love with her? You know, you're right. I think it's a question (laughs) we need to answer by the end of this. Yeah. Or does he settle for her? Who else is he going to go with? The Black Lagoon creature? She and the witches, I think, are the only women. Oh, yeah. and, like, the mother, but she has a son and a husband. I mean, he could go for one of the men. That's allowed. That is allowed. Is he a skeleton under his clothes? I think so. He takes his head off and you see his, like, neck. Does Jack have a body? I guess he changes clothes. What does Jack look like naked? Skeleton? How does he move with no muscles? Magic? Does he have sex? Can he have sexual relations with that woman? She's a doll. She is a doll. I don't think... I feel like if they are in love, it's just like a hug and cuddle kind of situation. Of course, you don't have to be in love to have sex. Yeah. 
But I'm saying is, if she was created to be a pleasure doll by Dr. Finkelstein... I don't like this conversation anymore. <laughs> is it appropriate that he starts a relationship with her by the end? I don't think... I don't know. Is she... she Because she's made out of, like, fabric and stuffing, right? Or is she made out of skin? I think her clothes are made out of fabric and her skin is made out of skin. Whose skin? Whose skin, exactly. I made you with my own hands. What is the story? Of them? Yeah. He made her to be a pleasure doll. I don't think so. But he accidentally felt fatherly towards her. I That's don't what I think, think so. So he pulled out a rib bone. Okay, so we know he's got bones under there. Yeah. It's not just stuffing. See, I thought Zero just had a glowing nose. Yeah. I when mean, I first saw this. It wouldn't make any sense. And see, these guys just sleep on the street. I guess, like, once the scare... Because that black cat... I mean, people aren't scared of black cats anymore. No. So it just lives in Halloween Town. Yeah. Yeah, it's things like... I know the comic books cover this. But in the movie, they don't explain how, like, how Jack became king of Halloween Town. They don't explain the position. They don't explain the jobs. He has painted fingernails. I never noticed that before. Yeah, he does. He's a two-faced politician. Get it? <laughs> He's a two-faced politician. See, that guy, that guy's never going to have to go homeless in Halloween Town because that's always a fear. Who's not? The mayor. Why not? Because two-faced politicians are always a fear. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, a little digging on politics. <laughs> politics. Uh, I didn't know this movie was so woke. Uh, I like how filthy everything is, too. Mm -hmm. Like, it's got smudges all over it. That, too. The Jack o' Lantern Sun didn't show up on screen when I saw this in the theaters. Huh. It was just too bright. It was too washed out. I like Jack's yawn face. I like that he has skeleton bone eyelids. He does have skeleton bone eyelids. <laughs> well, he can also smile. He's not really a skull. He's like a he has a ball head with but that kind of suggests skull features but he's he's kind of just a creature i wonder if anyone's ever like done that thing where you reconstruct what a person looked mm -hmm. like from their skeleton but with jack skellington i don't like what would he look like with he skin? has folds in his neck like it's made of skin does he or are those supposed to be no i guess you're right it is just a neck it's not vertebrae yeah that doesn't make any sense so he's more like a snake monster that's horrifying so he's never been here. This is called the Hinterlands. He's never been to the Hinterlands. No one has. No one knows it exists. How? How does no one ever... I think you just... Because he's just never been curious. No one's curious in these worlds. Yeah. Right? Okay, I have a question. What does the prep for Thanksgiving look like? It's just a lot of cooking. What does the prep for Easter look like? I guess hiding eggs. Hiding eggs. Yeah, the Easter Bunny at least comes to your house. Yeah. There's no, like, Thanksgiving turkey that comes to your house. That would be a nightmare. That would be a nightmare. They actually, it's just a turkey farm on the other side. It's just a turkey. It's, just, just it's send... literally just somebody's house. Yeah. In Here... America, by the way. It's a strictly American holiday. Yeah. Here we go. The, this is All my right. favorite... Keep in mind. Okay, here we go. Here we go. The big question. The big question. I love the way the snow looks in this. Jack does not know what this is. What is this? Snow? Right? Right? Can we just... Can we agree that Jack does not know what snow is? Which, clearly they've never been to Minnesota. I was going to say, <laughs> anyone who's ever been to Minnesota, what's the most famous blizzard from Minnesota? Halloween. The Halloween blizzard of 1990-whatever. Yeah, the Halloween blizzard was 91. Jack wouldn't know what, what snow is. That could have been the whole story, is him not being able to bring Halloween to Minnesota. Yeah. Does that mean nobody's ever happy in a Halloween town? I don't know. Because ha Halloween is, like, the most joyous holiday. Does you get he, free candy. Does he just think these are children, or are these just elves? Like, do elves... Are there children elves? Because one of them was clearly bigger than two of them. Right, but like, like here. Yeah. He says, the children are asleep. But are they children or are they just elves? I think he thinks they're kids because they're so small. Mm -hmm. Little cozy things, Jack. They're elves. They're people. Are they wood elves? Are these Tolkien elves? <laughs> I love, I love hey, that. there was plenty of music in Halloween Town, bud. Right, right. <laughs> they literally sing all the time. Yeah. Now, 
two songs end with him saying, hmm, and I hate it. Yeah. I wish Elfman had come up with a better ending. I know. You're about to see the greatest effect in the history of tele movies, in the history of film. It's the best, best moment in the history of everything. The vampires are all brothers. Are vampires able to do that usually? No, I don't understand the rules. Here we go. Right there is the greatest <laughs> moment in film history. That mummy, when we watched this in college, we watched that moment over and over again. Yeah. The mummy cranking the cat's tail is the funniest thing ever put on films. Is she a witch? Do spells work here? I don't understand what the rules are. It's sort of a Halloween grab bag. How do they feel about, like, Hollywood monsters? Like, how do they feel about It and Freddy Krueger? I have no idea. Like, there's no licensed characters in this town. Yeah. Like, the vampires are just vampires. He's a mad scientist. They're archetypes, but they aren't licensed characters. They should do a movie where Halloween Town starts getting put out of business because we've created scarier monsters than them. What is he? He is a mad scientist with big lips. A beak? He's like a Simpsons he character. He looks like a duck. He's got a little nose, though. Does he ever take his glasses off? I don't understand. Yeah, you're right. What is Dr. Finkelstein? I remember watching this when it first came out and being like, are we supposed to recognize him as something? All right. So Jack went to uh, Christmas Town. Mm -hmm. He saw some stuff. Did he steal this car? Yeah. And if he stole it from whom, and why did no one in Christmas Town notice? Also, are those just ordinary rats in Halloween Town? Are those rats from our world? Where'd he get those goggles? He stole it. He stole so many things. Do you think that the people in Christmas Town are just like, yeah, sure, you can have some stuff? I mean, they are giving. Yeah. I think this is the next song that ends with him going, hmm. Yeah. Why is she not allowed to go to town meetings? Why is he so protective of her? Because she's made out of stuffing. So, this guy has an axe in his head. That's a dead skeleton hanging from a tree. The Grim Reaper, I guess, hangs out here as well. I think these people would kill you if you went to Halloween Town. Yeah. So they are mean. Okay, so we know so that... So Satan is real. Satan's real, and in Halloween Town, they don't give presents to each other. No. The concept doesn't even exist. Yeah. That's his other choice for a girlfriend. Yeah. Is her. Why did they sew their son's eyes shut? We don't know. Did, was he just born that way? I don't think so. Those can are clearly people, stitches. Can people be born in Nightmare Land? Maybe they're the only two who figured out sex. Yeah. Or the only two that are genetically compatible. Maybe. Maybe he was born without eyes and they had to sew the socket shut so it wouldn't but get But Jack infected. doesn't have eyes. Do you need eyes to see in this world? Clearly not. I guess. I feel like the hanging skeletons don't get enough to do. Or I the talking agree. tree. I want to see them all like with their own subplot. So, so the people in Halloween Town are incapable of being anything but scary. Right. They can only see things through their own filter. Also, there's like a, a jack-o'-lantern just sitting in the audience who never moves. He's like the only unanimated guy. Uh, so they're like, they can't not be evil. Yeah. I, Does that make Jack Skellington What is the book Bobo Gets a Fire Truck about? <laughs> and why is it so long? Is there a rule against the holidays learning about each other? There must be. But there can't be because nothing, like, no, there's no consequences of it, them learning about each other except for the fact that they haven't learned about each other before. Who is in charge of all of it? Is it God? Is it Jesus? But if it was... Is there a Jesus land? Don't you think that if there was, then the actual literal devil wouldn't just be in Halloween Town? Right, I don't think he's the actual devil. He's very small. That's true. Maybe it's just, like, one of the devil's sons or something. I think he's just a imp. An imp, okay. <laughs> so, do they believe in God in Halloween Town? Like, if you proselytize there, could you start a church? I guess the real question is, is this where you go instead of hell? <laughs> like... I think so. But why are there not more people? Are these actual vampires and ghouls? Or I are these, like, representatives of the concept of vampire and ghoul? I think... Does Sally 
have a role as a scary creature? I don't think so, because she's not allowed to go anywhere. What does Dr. Finkelstein do then? Is, uh, maybe, I think he makes tests, like does testing maybe? Okay. Does he get to kidnap a child each year and do Probably. experiments on it? Is that what? how they get? Flesh and things? Yeah, he had to have built Sally. Or, or is Sally, so, I think Sally is honestly supposed to be a rag doll. Yeah. I think she's just supposed to be a doll. Yeah. However, we will soon see that Finkelstein can create life from bones. Yeah. Why does she care so much about Jack? We haven't seen them actually interact yet. Right. We don't get to see them do much together. And when we do, he's mostly just being a jerk to her. Yeah. We ha we know they have a history because he's delighted yet not surprised to get a treat from her. Mm -hmm. But is it more of like a... like it's, it's like that thing where you get a gift from that person in whatever environment you're in that nobody's allowed to be mean to. Also, if she can do that whenever she wants, why why hasn't she... Is this how she always gets out? I think so. Is it? Is that how she always gets out? So I, my theory is that she and Jack, they probably slept together once, like a long time ago. Because who knows how long she's been here. Like these they, these people could be like hundreds of years old. I feel, I think Jack has explicitly said that he's very old. I mean, the comic books would say otherwise, but <laughs> we don't count them as continuity. As canon. They are their own continuity. Mm -hmm. There's this whole comic about him and Oogie Boogie who were like friends when they were young and how they be he became the Pumpkin King. It's it's part of the manga series. It's not worth reading. Uh, how did she set this system up? <laughs> I think this is just how they get things to other people. Like, I don't know. I guess he has his own bucket and pulley system. But this shows that people in Halloween Town do give each other gifts. If he's not surprised by this. Right, it wouldn't be a gift. Yeah. Also, that people in Halloween Town are delighted by delightful things, like the butterfly. Yeah. Like, that's not a scary thing. It's not like she, she sent him a skull smog or whatever. It's mm -hmm. like a beautiful butterfly. So they are capable of appreciating things other than, like, Halloween-themed things. But also, Sally has a weird superpower. <laughs> yeah. That we don't understand. That never gets explained or expanded upon. Maybe Sally is made up of the flesh of dead elves. Okay. <laughs> New theory. Doctor whatever his name is already knew about Christmas Town, and every year he goes and harvests a bunch of <laughs> elves from Christmas Town. Farms Town. elves. Oh, here comes another line that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> here it comes. He's, He's already, already dead. dead. He said it in a song. Okay. Why do they have that child on a leash like that? <laughs> His eyes are sewn shut. He can't see. The mom has to lead him around by a leash. It's the darkest character in the story. <laughs> it's a little boy whose eyes have been sewn shut. Or any kind of grip. Snowflakes don't last very long. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. If you grip a snowflake, it's going to melt. So the other holidays don't celebrate holidays other than their own. Right. Which means that Thanksgiving land must suck. Thanksgiving land must suck, but must taste good. In fact, you would have to go to Thanksgiving land after being in Christmas land because all they have to eat is candy. Yeah. Do you think the other like ho like holiday towns all know about each other and they're just shunning Halloween towns? Right, right. The <laughs> they all, they're all pretty aware of what's going on. Nobody wants to deal with Halloween town. Also, wouldn't you eat a lot of candy in Halloween town too? You'd think. Why is Halloween Town all about murdering people, but the other holiday places are all about the actual holidays? <laughs> right. Like, I think my confusion has always been Christmas and Easter are the two holidays that are like, there is an external entity that is yeah. that is responsible for spreading the cheer of this holiday. Halloween is something you do. Yeah. Nobody comes to your house with Halloween. No. Except for other children. Right. Right. That's what the young, like, I feel like that's what the Oogie Boogie's, like, little child yeah. kids represent. Like, the kids who go trick-or-treaters. They're trick-or-treaters. He says, like, the three greatest trick-or-treaters. A, what does that mean? B, B, why are they cruel? And C, how did they get, did they die? Right, are they dead children? Do you think that if there's a living person who becomes greater than them at trick-or-treating, they get killed on Halloween to come to Halloween And now? become the new Lock Shocker Barrel? Yeah. Probably. If you die on Halloween... Maybe that's who all these people are. People who died on Halloween. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. 
They have blue lips. Do they suffocate? Yes. Okay. Yes. They all choked to death on Halloween candy and came to Halloween Town. Okay. So, until this point, we're not aware that there's even any kind of, like, villain. Yeah. Like, there doesn't need to be a villain. No. Because Jack is the... Villain. Is the... Yeah, he's the... Or it's like, he's a, he rates his own problems. Yeah. He's our protagonist, but it's mostly him against himself. Oogie Boogie's kind of there just to kind of, like, be... A foil. A foil, yeah, an impediment. I like Oogie Boogie. He's a cool character. I also don't feel like Oogie Boogie's a villain, because he's literally just doing what Halloween Town is. So he's the boogeyman. Yeah. So he's supposed to be the person who instills fear in, like, the hearts of children. Yeah. Is it a problem that he dies in the end? Yes. <laughs> Gotta love the Oogie Boogie Man. It's a cool character. Also, is that blackface? Because I object. But also, like, it's clear that nobody in this town is good. Right. They they think that's their job, but they're not mean. But they don't know what mean is. No. It's kind of like Toontown. Yeah. In Toontown, they don't mean to kill people. But if you go to Toontown, you'll probably die because they'll drop a piano on you. Yeah. They operate on diff Like the Fae. <laughs> Okay, but these characters are not the Fae. No. They are not... They're not incomprehensible. They are very comprehensible. They're just not very smart, I guess. Besides Sally and Jack... Okay, I'll give you a Jack. Who's the most intelligent person in Halloween Town? Oogie Boogie. Is he? Is he smart? I feel like... He does one thing. I feel like there's a lot going on behind the scenes we don't understand. I think it's the... I think it's the Swamp Woman. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the 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 who when you call who's there. Is the who when you call who's there like a Dr. Seuss who? <laughs> like a who from Whoville? It's Doctor Who. David Tennant's <laughs> in this movie, actually. <laughs> what would happen if Beetlejuice went to Halloween Town? He'd win. Are they bodies? I don't get what they are. Did Dr. Finkelstein build them? Because they have stitches all over themselves. Did Dr. Finkelstein create all of Halloween Town? Oh. Did he bring it all to life? Yeah. Right. Because if Jack is dead, like, is he... Because... If Sally is... <laughs> why does Sally have visions? <laughs> I was going to say, why does Sally have breasts? Why would he build her with her breasts? Maybe Sally is actually just one whole woman who he cut to pieces <laughs> and then stitched back together. No, because she's full of leaves. So she's just he, skin. Yeah, well, maybe he had an actual woman that he chopped into pieces, took out all of her innards, and then stuffed her full of straw or something. So he deboned a lady. Yeah. Stuffed her full of leaves and brought her to life. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe if we're going with the theory that he... Oh, here's, here's the part that I always quote. I say that whenever I see a rabbit outside. Bunny! <laughs> Why isn't the Easter Bunny just an actual bunny? Like, does Why isn't the Easter Bunny talk? He actually does a lot. Yeah. Why do the skeletons have eyelashes? <laughs> Who is this? Where was Igor before? Did he build Igor? <laughs> Okay, so if we're going with the theory that he made everybody in Halloween Town, then what is his goal? Dr. Finkelstein? Yeah. I don't know. I think he's just a mad scientist. Now, as we know, as anyone who knows anything is well aware, the original storyline was going to end with Oogie Boogie being revealed to be Dr. Finkelstein. Okay. Which does not make any sense, no. but that was the original one of the original endings. Mm -hmm. Was it was he gets unsewn and it's Dr. Finkelstein like piloting this thing. Yeah. Doesn't add up at all. No. But he was intended That's a scarier clown. <laughs> he was intended to be the villain. Yeah. That makes sense, I think. Oh, it's a book of spells. I thought it said Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that the Vampires don't have eyes, like yeah. pupils. That's creepy. Creepy. Who is this? Who is this kid? Like, <laughs> also, why is he coated as black? It's just a very strange choice. And yeah, so that's the father in the middle. Is he just a guy? 
Did he just have a guy with her and blind the child and sew up his eyes? Or is that... No, that's one of the musicians. Who is that? This guy? He's awesome. I know that I he love was, his design. He was, I think, the most difficult puppet to, like, get to work properly. Like, to figure out how... To, like, the maquette was, like, mm -hmm. hard to figure out. Meanwhile... I really think that they should do a collaboration with Christmas Land instead of trying to do it on their own. Like, I feel like, uh, like a good Halloween-themed Christmas would really go well for no, some that's kids. That's true. That's what Disney hopes for every year when they put out more of their merch. Yeah. This how? is kind of, Okay. It's cute how they put all this together. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and this is when he finds this skull somehow. Again, that's a pretty cool jack-in-the-box. Yeah. Like, these are just jack-in-the-boxes. Like, there's nothing really that creepy about them. I think they are alive, but also, like... So, is Finkelstein, because, like, the jack-in-the-boxes are alive and all the toys they give to the kids are alive, did Finkelstein bring all of them to life as well? Probably. And also, Halloween is about giving candy to children who come to your door. Where's the candy? Do you think that... Well, because wasn't... What, like, Halloween was partially made off, wasn't it, the, the costuming was originally to confuse or, like, spook off actual demons? I mean, Halloween has a lot of different so maybe, origins, but... Maybe our version of Halloween is not the version that they're used oh, to. Oh, I see. Where's Mrs. Claus in all this? She, she had to have heard her husband get kidnapped. She got murdered. <laughs> yeah, they murdered Mrs. Claus. Yeah. We also murdered Mrs. Claus. There's the candy. That's his candy. No, That's it's Chris not, because it's 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 yellow. It's oh, orange and black. I guess only Lockshock and Barrel have candy then. See, I feel like Jack isn't evil. No, Jack's. He's just stupid. He's just dumb. Or like, like obviously, this whole movie is about cultural appropriation. Yeah, clearly. Like, it's not your holiday to celebrate, Jack. So leave off. These are the worst children. Like, you'd think the best trick-or-treaters would be decent kids. Right, just the best at getting candy. Yeah, fog juice. <laughs> Why is she hiding the fog juice? Why, does her, why do her shoes not go with her outfit? Well, she was dressed by this guy. Yeah, fair. And now, of course, the best scene in the movie. Yeah. Best song, too. It is a good villain song. It a is. really good villain song. Also, I don't... Oogie Boogie's just doing Oogie Boogie thing. It's true. But he will murder you. Yeah. Well, so will everyone else in this town, That's apparently. That's true. <laughs> I don't like Santa's little teeth. I don't like a lot of Santa's design. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is not the first time that Danny Elfman's written a song based on Minnie the Moocher. Like, this yeah. style of song. Uh, he wrote a very famous parody of Minnie the Moocher for the movie Forbidden Zone that he mm -hmm. performed. Which is basically this moment. Yeah. He's, he's singing the role of the devil, but he's just, it's this. Mm -hmm. So to me, this is the most Oingo Boingo of the movie. Yeah. Is that, are those real bullets? There's are real bullets. They will murder you. Yeah. Here's the moment that was cut from the movie, which I wish they put back in. Right here. There's supposed to be a dance break there. It's in yeah. the soundtrack and it's in the deleted scenes. Of Oogie Boogie doing all this crazy, like, visual stuff. So why is Oogie Boogie allowed to exist if Jack hates him so much? Why is Oogie Boogie allowed to what? Exist if Jack hates him so much and doesn't want him involved in anything. If you read the comic, <laughs> <laughs> It's because they used to be best friends. Like Megatron and Optimus Prime. Okay. But yes, there is a thing, like, he's obvious. Also, like, he's a necessary part of Halloween. He's the Boogie But man. he hasn't... We don't see them preparing for Halloween. And I wish we did, because I feel like that would add so much more. Right. Like, what do they actually do? Yeah. What does Jack do on Halloween when he's out there? Does he murder people? Does he just out there murdering people? The real world in this movie delights me. What? The the, the real world in this movie oh, delights yeah. me. <laughs> That's Who great. Is that? Great joke, Cyclops. <laughs> Thank you, eyeless boy. Yeah. <laughs> Truly, if you think about that for more than two seconds, it becomes those horrifying it's things. It's horrifying. Oh, what a perfect plot. It all so comes glad together. for some reason the spooky dog had a glowing right. nose. Right. Why, 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 <laughs> why does the dead dog's ghost have a glowing nose and can fly, if not for just the fact that we needed a, a Rudolph? 
maybe he was originally Rudolph, and then he died, and he's actually a reindeer. And he's clearly a dog named yeah. Zero, because Rudolph exists in this world. Because there's a Santa Claus. Yep. And there's a whole book titled Rudolph. Rudolph. Why does she see the future? <laughs> Why does she have psychic powers? We don't know. So this was like a last minute song mm -hmm. when they were like, oh, we should give Sally something to sing. None of it rhymes. I don't think it needs to. No, no, no. But it just, it's interesting. Yeah. It's very different to like tone from mm -hmm. the rest of the movie. And I think that works for this character because she's very different from the rest of this movie. The moment where she steps up onto the gate and then down the other side, when I first saw this, was the most incredible stop motion I'd ever seen. It's so smooth and believable. And it, there, there's a weight to her mm -hmm. character that just blew me away. And remember, this is pre-CGI characters. Yeah. So there's a thing in songwriting where if you don't rhyme, but you the word, here it is. Ah, I just love that. Mm -hmm. Right there. So well done. Yes. Uh, when you don't rhyme, but you come really close to rhyming, mm -hmm. like if these near rhymes, it shows a level of maturity in the character, like in musical theater. Yeah. Like you don't, they don't have to quite hit the rhyme in order to get their emotions across, their feelings across. And that's what Sally's song like almost entirely is. Why is there just a random cat? The cat Maybe doesn't talk. Maybe it fairies that the souls of the dead. That cat also looks like the cat from Coraline. It fa uh. Why do they have birthday party hats on? They don't know anything about birthday, celebrating anything. Is there a birthday land? There is a dreamland in the comics. <laughs> no, it's in the... I think it's in the Sally... There's a new trilogy of novels that just started about Sally becoming the pumpkin queen. And that she discovers the land of dreams, which is ruled over by oh, the Sandman. Oh, the angel just got hung from the ceiling. That doesn't look like enough presents for the entire world. <laughs> if I saw this as a child, I'd be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Fair enough, I guess. I mean, it's no weirder than a guy coming down your chimney. Yeah. Best moment of the film. Yep. Uh, <laughs> the kid doesn't even seem upset about it. No, well, he's just stunned. I like this guy. He's got his cookies. He's got his cocoa. He's drawn a little guy. <laughs> they didn't. They, they don't have to animate his face. Yep. Yeah, this is this is the best sequence in the film to me. I made one of these wreaths. Yeah. I used to hang it up at your mom's house. I remember. Does that woman die? She gets strangled to death. No, she, she gets terrorized by the wreath. She probably dies. She's definitely dead by now. Yeah. This was 30 years ago. Also, these toys are awesome. They are alive. Like, the toys that Santa would have given them, not as fun. Does the people in this world know that magic is real? This world has to be one of those crazy movie worlds where Santa Claus is real and everyone knows it. Because the parents... The parents don't seem surprised that Santa brought their kids toys. Yeah. They're just surprised That's the toys. Awesome. They're surprised the toys are violent. Sally's neck, man. That's how I think. So Finkelstein had to have used more than one body, because he has two necks in there. But Jack has two necks. <laughs> Is Jack a skeleton of a Sally creature? I think all of them are fake beings that were made by Doctor Finkelstein, whatever his name is. In what is his name? Finkelstein. Okay. So, what is this? This is them shooting down Jack. This is the best part of the movie. So, if Jack had flesh, he'd look like a Sally. Yeah. Why are they scared of dying? Why is it a big deal when Jack gets shot down? I mean, besides the fact that it ruins the holiday. Meanwhile, Santa Claus is like, "What is happening?" They should have had Santa Claus like covered in blood at this point. I used to also say this. I used to say, a tickle, tickle, tickle. A tickle, tickle, tickle. If I was Santa Claus, I would be horrible. Here we go. Tickle, tickle, tickle. <laughs> That's so gross. Why would you see a woman's leg and be like, knock off the shoe and just be like, tickle, tickle, tickle. Because you're a creep. Which also means that Oogie Boogie has like a libido that he wants to make love to a woman. Or he's just a creep. <laughs> or he's just a creep. I mean, he's a sentient sack of bugs. I want to make love to a woman. <laughs> but I have a sentient sack of bugs, so there's not much I can do about that. That's true. Finkelstein or whoever made him did not give him, like, make, make him anatomically correct sack. <laughs> you would also think that Jack would expect to be attacked. Like, isn't this a very Halloween thing to happen? Like, ha ha, they're Maybe... trying to kill me. Well... Maybe the world just accepts it on Halloween. They're like, people are going to die. Yeah. It's Halloween. 
Oh yeah, does he turn into a guy like at some point? He turns into a guy on Halloween. It's the scariest thing. <laughs> I mean, again, like any movie where Santa Claus can't make it, parents can still give their kids toys. Like, you can still wake up the next morning with gifts. He put his jaw back on, and then it melded into his face. Which is amazing. Yeah. I sang this in my senior final in high school. Yeah. Blind like that little boy that someone blinded. Yeah. And sewed his eyes shut. Does that mean, doc? if doctor, if the doctor man did that, did he just hate that boy? Maybe he needed those eyes for something else. Yeah, what is that? How do they get to the real world? That's my question. <laughs> How did you get back out of Christmas land? Christmas town. Because you entered through a door in a tree and then fell a hundred feet. How did it, where's the door? How did he find the door? Are these all places in the real world? And the doors just transport you there quickly? I don't know. I know how you get back to the real world from Chris, from Halloween Town, because we get to see it in a minute. Yeah. But the Christmas, how did he know how to get back from Christmas Town? He didn't even know how to get out maybe of that, Halloween Town. Maybe that car that he still can fly. Oh. Can go anywhere because it's a Santa car. Yeah. How do you fit those coattails back there? Why is he called the Pumpkin King? Because he wears a pumpkin on his head. He doesn't have a pumpkin on his head. But he does at the beginning of the movie. He puts a pumpkin on his head, but why is he called the Pumpkin King? Maybe that's just the title of Halloween Town. I guess, but what does Halloween have to do with pumpkins? Jack Shouldn't it be the Jack-O-Lantern King? His name's Jack. They can't call him the Jack-O-Lantern King. He should be Jack the Lantern King. That would be fun. See, he goes out into the mausoleum. Maybe there's a mausoleum in... Christmas Town. In Christmas Town. <laughs> so we're connected to Halloween Town by graveyards. Yeah. Are we connected to Christmas Town by fireplaces? Chimneys, Ch maybe? That's where all the people who got killed in chimneys when trying to clean them go. <laughs> Why does Oogie Boogie live down there? <laughs> I don't understand Oogie's setup. So he's a gambler who's made of bugs. Yeah. Who's a bag of bugs but like the gambling motif is cool but what does that have to do with halloween what does it have yeah what does that have to do with snake eyes you did win the jackpot buddy he did win the jackpot and now jack's gonna kick him in the pot i like his scoot that's terrifying jack if you could do that this whole time mm, it's that's... almost like it would make a good uh a uh, video game level yeah <laughs> why does he think that try so jack can die is he can he get killed or just disassembled like oogie boogie can die because because he's not he's like a hive mind right yeah also setting up that they used to be friends in childhood makes no sense because he's not like i trusted you once boogie it's just like this guy's just a bad guy is Oogie Boogie dead, or is he just like a ghost that is going to get more bugs to build around himself? No, because that's the last one. So, so Santa, Santa is, is the murderer. murderer. <laughs> right. Santa killed the, is actually committed the one murder in this movie. Mm -hmm. But is there a court system in Halloween Town? Like, could you try Oogie Boogie, or is it pretty much just like, oh, eight skeletons, ghosts? Skeletons, ghosts. David Sanford used to say that all the time. God, I don't like his mouth. No, what? He lays a finger aside his nose, and up the chimney he rose. That's the Santa Claus thing. Of course. It's lore. Now he's gonna murder those children for right. He should thing. dis dis assemble them. Delete them. Yeah, I mean, no one's gonna hold him responsible for them. Aww. Do those toys get... They're sentient. Right. So what happens to them? I guess they just go into Oogie's, like, lava pit. Or maybe they become new members of Halloween Town. Uh, yeah. Maybe th also, there must be millions of them, because they had to yeah. make one for every boy and girl in the world. Who's because, the gatekeeper? Wait, hang on. Who's that guy? Who's gatekeeper? Also, they must have made them for every boy and girl, because there's no way Jack and them understand the whole, like... Christianity versus other religions. Yeah. Like, they probably just brought toys to every house. Does that mean that only people who celebrate Christmas get saved? 
Uh, only people who celebrate Christmas turn into ghouls when they die. Oh, okay. Because it's all connected. Mm -hmm. There's no Hanukkah town. No. Wait. Oh, see? So, now Halloween Town gets Christmas. Now Halloween Town gets Christmas. Now it gets snow, even though we know that because of the 1991 Halloween blizzard, there's, there's no, no way, way Jack did. This was supposed to be a human head originally, and it was filmed that way. It was Tim Burton's head. Yeah. But Disney made him change it. That's lame. She looks so unhappy. <laughs> yeah, because she's, she realizes she's still stuck with Jack. Again, the only relationship we have with him is that he was a jerk to her. Uh, what? <laughs> he made another pleasure doll. I guess he he made like a wife. Yeah. That's so weird. With half of his brain. That is so weird. He's not a good person. But he also made Sally, I think, to be a wife. Which is weird. I wish that this movie ended with them being friends. They probably are friends. Yeah, I just wish there wasn't... Because the, to me, the romance like subplot doesn't make any sense. Because we never see them really interact. Right. They don't have much of a history together. Uh, we do know, per the soundtrack album, mm -hmm. that they have children. Because the f closing narration on the soundtrack mentions their kids. It was cut from the movie, though. But it's on the soundtrack. That they're skeleton kids or whatever. Which is weird. I think those are just the kids that died that Christmas. I think it's like when Kermit and Miss Piggy have kids. And they're like weird frog pig hybrids. I'm gonna assume that it's just the kids that died that Christmas. Why did Zero never become a more popular Disney character? I don't know. You think you'd see more Zero stuff? He's an adorable design. And he's a dog. So yeah, so that's uh, Night Before Christmas. Greatest movie of all time. Yeah, it's a pretty good movie. movie. Despite what we said during the film, uh, good movie. Yeah. <laughs> shake my hand for some reason <laughs> good job watching a movie <laughs> and we're back ba oh my god you're so loud now and oh. we're back we just watched the nightmare before christmas and talked through it because we can't not do that or we'll get copyright straight right how was it watching a movie again for the first time in a while when was the last time you... movie two weeks no, ago. No, this movie. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, it was good. I always forget how fast-paced this movie is. Yeah, it's like an hour and 15 minutes long. Yeah, it's... Because the movie, it feels really fast at the end. I feel like when Jack is like, I'm truly happy to be the Pumpkin King after yeah. all of that. Like, it's very sudden. And I always forget how fast it is. Yeah, they... they, they it just zips through... Doesn't... Okay, so for those of you who aren't familiar with Nightmare Before Christmas... <laughs> All one of you. It's a riff on the classic, oh no, Christmas isn't going to happen this mm -hmm. year because something happened to Santa Claus. But this time, the hero of the story is the guy who made it happen. And he's the king of Halloween Town, Jack the Pumpkin King. Gets it into his skull to, sell, to throw Christmas his own way. Kidnaps Santa Claus, tries to throw Christmas, screws it all up, has to get rescued, and Santa ends up... Jack doesn't winning. have to get rescued. Well, I mean, the, the the situation has to be... Yeah. yeah. So, here's a th the thing. Jack is very explicit in his, like, kidnapping of Santa Claus, or I guess organizing the kidnapping of Santa Claus, that he doesn't want anything bad to happen to Santa Claus. Right. But why does he then not just be like, just take Santa Claus into the house? Yeah, everyone knows he kidnapped Santa Claus. Yeah. Like, he... He, he shows up in the middle of a crowd. Mm -hmm. So he's not like, we gotta keep this on the down, though. He's just like... Take him to wherever you want. <laughs> and they take him to the worst place in the world. Yeah, they, I mean, they do the exact opposite of what Jack Skellington told them to do because they're bad kids. Right. Like, well, we don't meet Oogie Boogie until... So he mentions Oogie Boogie. He's like, keep that no account Oogie Boogie out of this. So we're like, oh, who's Oogie Boogie? And then we don't meet him until Santa Claus has been kidnapped. Yeah, well, uh, we see him a little bit in the... Right, okay. we see his shadows and stuff. He's the shadow on the moon at night. He is the shadow on the moon at night, filling your dreams to the brim with fright. Does he, does he control dreams? No, because as is established in later novels, uh, that is the Sandman from the Dreamland. Uh, as, as is established in the... In the Reign of the Pumpkin Queen, or whatever the new Sally novel. It came out, like, this year or last year, mm -hmm. I think. Um... So, Oogie Boogie, and then he's introduced, he's a gambler. Yeah. Made of bugs, who's sewn together. Mm -hmm. 
uh, as we saw in the deleted or alternate ending, the original concept was for Finkelstein to have been Oogie Boogie. And he's like, I created this contraption to teach you a lesson, Sally. Which doesn't make any sense. Makes because no sense. Oogie Boogie's an established character. Established, established well established. To be fair. These kids do, work for him. <laughs> we do never see Dr. Finkelstein in the same area as... Oogie Boogie, like even in the beginning of the movie when the song is going on, Doctor Finkelstein isn't a part of that. He only appears after that's all over. I guess, but that's you know, it's a, that, to me that's a stretch of a connection. Also, it just makes no sense, and also it just ended with him like getting away. He was like, Set it up for a sequel, obviously. Curses! I'm gonna go build myself a wife. So that's the other thing is this ends with Doctor Finkelstein building a woman for himself with his own brain with his own brain uh we establish in that deleted scene that he made sally out of flesh and cloth rags rags uh we discussed during the film mm -hmm. the fact that he must have made sally as a pleasure doll stop saying that <laughs> i hate those words he made sally to be his companion she didn't work out yeah he doesn't consider her smart she wants to escape she well, wants she to be free she doesn't like him she doesn't like him he's gross he's this gross twisted old man he's gross no one likes him uh he makes a wife who looks just like him mm -hmm. because he finds a skull of a relative i guess was it a skull of somebody related to finkelstein because why does it look just like finkelstein why did the skull have lips we don't know is jack's flesh does jack's flesh make him look like a sally i think jack's okay so there's so there's like three different theories about who the people in Nightmare Before Christmas are. Yes. They're either A, people who have died okay. from the real world. They're B, they're either they're just residents of Halloween Town, which exists in a different world, and they're a different species to human. Mm -hmm. Or C, Doctor Finkelstein has created all of them. Okay. Those are the options. I mean, the, the other options are the dead things from other places, or they're just like a. Uh, like a projection of humanity's greatest fears all in a, one place right but they're none, none of them are like they're not christmas elves they're not like jack-o-lantern people right <laughs> they're just monsters that was our big discussion so i just looked up to see if anyone had ever created a jack skellington with flesh i found a jack skellington with ears that was as far as they went <laughs> i guess uh yes so we were discussing during the film that that halloween town is not the same as Christmas Town. No. Christmas Town is all of, Christmas Town is just Santa's workshop. It's the classic yeah. Santa's workshop. It's just a whole town that's dedicated to building toys for Christmas and getting ready for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Halloween Town is just a scary theme place. Like it's yeah. a theme park. It also just it looks like they don't take care of it. Right. They have no funding. They have no funding. They have no fun. They uh, do have fun. They though. do seem to have fun, but they don't know what enjoyment is. It's the Oscar the Grouch conundrum. Mm -hmm. Oscar the Grouch's conundrum is always, I love trash, and the things that are trash are beautiful. I hate beauty, but I think trash is beautiful. I hate being happy. Only being sad makes me happy. It's that thing where it's like, okay, you, you have happiness. You know what beauty is. You just appreciate different things. So and that's the conundrum in Halloween Town. It's like, well, this is, we consider this aesthetically pleasing. Like, dirty is clean to us, I guess. Like, everything's... Except, uh, is Halloween filthy? Is that like... No. The Hallow <laughs> Halloween isn't a filthy holiday. It's Halloween, not about, like, let's get grimy. It's also not about dying. <laughs> right. It's about literally not dying. Yeah. And we're go like, you can make arguments about, oh, the things Halloween is based on. This movie's clearly set in modern Halloween, modern holidays, the Christian, Americanized version of every holiday. Right. We're good. That is the, that is what Halloween is in this world because that's what Christmas is. Uh, there's no like, you don't see a bunch of people like going to church on Christmas and praying to Jesus in this movie. Right, and they don't go to Christmas Town and there's like, Zwarte Piet or like the European Santa there's Claus. There's no Krampus. Krampus isn't there. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, there's not none of that. It's just America, American Christmas, American Halloween. So what does Halloween Town do? Like, what is the concept well, of Halloween Town? They have awards for who drinks the most blood. Do they kill the people they drink the blood from? Or I, they don't necessarily have to. But are those people turning into vampires? Then he says the vampires win the award for most blood drained in a single evening, which seems like a really unfair award. to Because who else is going to win? Yeah. I mean, are so are there other vampires? That's the other question. Are these the only vampires, or are these is Halloween Town like we represent the concepts? behind all these things there's actual vampires all over the place 
But we are the totemic vampires. We are the archetypal vampires. Is that what it is? How much magic is in this world? Why does the mummy only have one eye? That is a good question. I mean, I feel like the trope of the mummy is that, like, one eye is exposed um, from the bandaging or whatever. Like, you see something glowing and then the mummy or whatever. But why does the boy have no eyes? So there's a family in Halloween Town. The, that's our job, but we're not mean in our town of Halloween family. It's a husband and a wife and their little boy. The wife is, like, a large woman. The yeah. husband has, like, a bulbous nose. But they are seemingly just people. Yeah. The little boy is like a small chubby boy who seems very nice. Yeah. Uh, we see him crying at one point. Mm -hmm. However, his eyes have been removed and his eyelids sewn shut. Have his eyes been removed? I assume because his eyelids are sewn shut. That's worse if they haven't been. Who? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> who did this? Who Was did it Dr. This? Finkelstein? Was it his parents? Is there a reason the boy is not supposed to see? Or is there a reason we're not supposed to see the boy's eyes? Who's the boy with no eyes? Why is he treated that way? And why is, why is this why okay is in this movie? Why is he the only child of parents? Why is it okay? Very good. Who's the other child? There's the gargoyle boy. The bat boy? Yeah. Who looks like an African-American boy. He's got like he's got like a, a cut, like an, a styled Afro hairstyle. Mm -hmm. And like, vaguely African American features, mm -hmm. uh, which I find very strange for that one character. They're like, we're going to be very race specific with the gargoyle bat. There's also the Asian coded children. There's Asian. Well, okay, as far as humans go, yes. Yeah. There are the Asian coded children. There's two black kids, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of white kids. Um, I assume I'm assuming that when Jack finally manages to, to deliver presents, he makes it to like one town. It's yeah, just well, the one yeah, town, right? Yeah. Otherwise, Why does that town have a full military? Is that the only town in the world? Does each town... Okay. Does each small region in the world have its own localized well, Halloween town, Christmas town? Okay, here's a question. We see all of Christmas town, all of Halloween town. Is Are these just the size of the worlds in this universe? Like, maybe there is only one, like, small town... That is the normal world that all of the holidays go to. Like, there's Town Town. Yeah. Which is just like, Regular if you go world. through one of those trees, you'll go to just Town Land. Yeah. Which is just a small town. Like, this is a self-contained series yeah. of realities. Okay, yeah. so this is not even our Halloween. So now we're dealing with something else entirely. There's t there's Halloween Town, there's Christmas Town. Thanksgiving Town. Easter uh, Town. What? Easter, Easter town. town. There's St. Patrick's Town. Fourth of July town, because you see a firecracker door. Yep. And apparently town town, which makes sense, because that's why the human beings in there are kind of built like the Santa beings and the Halloween and the beings. Halloween beings. They don't look like people. Yeah. They look like puppet people, maquettes, mm -hmm. set up to... So if that's the case, who's ruling all these worlds? Who created these worlds? No god that I can envision. <laughs> I mean, the... Whoever made the puppets did. Are, so is your theory that these are just puppets? Are your is your theory that Halloween My Town, Christmas Town, and Town Town? My theory is that this movie is a movie. That's amazing. So <laughs> the reality is that Jack and friends and Halloween Town and all of them they're just a bunch of puppets in a movie. Yeah. It doesn't. None of it matters. <laughs> no, I think like because I feel like Town Town is a thing. Like I don't think there's a world beyond that town. Like, they exist solely to celebrate these holidays. Yeah, because otherwise you would see them on, like, national news talking about this, not just their local channel. Right, right. I mean, it is You'd that You'd be calling thing. the president. So, it reminds me of, in, there's a there's a Rankin-Bass special called The Night Before Christmas, uh, based on the poem, Twas the Night Before Christmas. And the Rankin-Bass special is about Santa Claus quits. He decides he's not going to celebrate Christmas anymore because he hates kids now. Uh, this is literally the plot of the cartoon. He, he starts to think that kids don't appreciate Christmas anymore. A little boy mouse sends him a letter that says, I don't believe you exist. Santa gets pissed, says, fine, Christmas is canceled then. You don't want to celebrate Christmas? You don't believe in Santa Claus? Fine. I'm not delivering toys to anyone so, like, anymore. So it's like God flooding the world. Right. It's essentially okay. that. They manage to get Santa back on their good side by building a clock that plays a song the children have written for Santa Claus. That can play it, and then when Santa, like, passes over 
the earth mm -hmm. on Christmas without delivering toys to anyone. I don't know why he's still out. They're going to he's going to hear the song playing. And yet it's just one little tiny village. Yeah. I think that also is a Christmas special village. Like Christmas specials and Christmas movies mm -hmm. seem to be they have a town that is the focus of the holidays attention. Yeah. Santa may not exist in the whole world. But he certainly exists in this one town. Like, everywhere else on Earth, Santa doesn't deliver presents. Maybe the greater God figure of this universe was like, wow, this is really chaotic. Uh, I don't want all of these holiday monsters running around right. the rest of the world. So I'll just give them one town that they can focus their attention on. Speaking of holiday monsters, the Easter Bunny. Yes. Not a sentient creature, just seems to be a bunny. Is it? It doesn't speak. It just hops. But it, like, it seems to understand its role. I get, maybe it just is sort of like a bee. Like, it just kind of goes, like, it is just... Is there more than one Easter Bunny? I think that's the Easter Bunny. Is it a king of its land? Does it have helpers? Are does there other... Yeah, does it have handlers? Are yeah. There, like, are there, like, egg people who are supposed to be, like, guarding the Easter Bunny and they all got murdered by those children? I don't know. We don't ever get to see Easter Land. Uh, what happens in Thanksgiving Town? We discussed this during the movie. A lot of turkey slaughtering. Just turkeys getting killed and people eating really good food, I guess. Yeah. Like, I mean, tur Thanksgiving Town, as you said, if you go to Christmas or Town... it's a bunch of racist You're only caricatures. eating candy. You go to Thanksgiving, you deal with the racism, but you're going to get fed and you're going to get something besides candy and ice cream. You go to Halloween Town, there's apparently nothing to eat, even though there should be... Candy. Right. Because as you said, Halloween Town is not really... Isn't trick-or-treating a town? The trick-or-treaters that are there are just three kids. There's three kids who are trick-or-treaters. Trick-or-treating, which is the crux of America's Halloween, yeah. is really downplayed in this movie. Like, yeah. do these monsters just go to Earth and jump out at trick-or-treaters? Is that their job? Again, are the vampires killing people? Does the werewolf guy turn back into a human? You said he probably turns back into a human on Halloween because that's his torture. Yeah. Uh, there's the swamp creature. We don't know what she does. She found a head in a lake. Where did that come from? Right. Did they kill someone? Do they murder people? Only one person gets murdered in this movie, and it is... Oogie Boogie. By... Santa Claus. Santa Claus is the only actual murderer that we meet in this story. Vampires probably do kill people. Would those toys, would Jack's Halloween toys have murdered those children if given the chance? Yes, we saw the woman in the rocking chair get murdered by the Christmas wreath. Right, she gets murdered by the Christmas wreath, but like the little kids have to like barricade the door to keep for the toys reason, from getting them. For some reason, I remember that snake eating one of the child's parents. <laughs> no, it just eats the tree. Would have been great if it ate a parent. Now, as we saw in a cut scene, originally the vampires are supposed to be playing hockey with... Tim Burton's head. Tim Burton's head. It was filmed that way. They had to cut it per the studio's request. A little too gruesome. Now, where did they get the head? From the lake. Where do they get the body? Like, who, as you said in the beginning, who's in the graveyard? Also, where did the flesh that makes Sally up come from? Right. He says, made it out of flesh. Where does Sally's flesh That's come from? That's why I think that Dr. Frankenstein made all of them. Okay, so your theory, you, you said this before, your theory is that everybody in Halloween Town was created by Dr. Finkelstein. Yes. Okay. And so basically, like, God does. God is like, I'm going to create a world to have worshipers. Yeah. And then it gets out of hand and he murders everybody. Yeah. So, like, he created Jack. He created Sally. He yep. created Oogie Boogie. He created everybody. Mm -hmm. Hedge found a lake. Swamp Woman. The Behemoth. The guy with the funny head that goes up and down. Yep. He's like, these are my creations. They're all... Like, people from Townsville, town, town. Land, that he's warped. That he's kidnapped and warped. All right. Is the graveyard in Halloween Town dead town, town people? I think so. Okay, so that must be where he gets the flesh from. Yeah. You bury someone in a graveyard in town, town. They sort of flip over and they yeah, end up in Halloween that's Town. that's how you get to Halloween Town right. from town, town. So once you're dead, your flesh is forfeit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's It's theirs. He turns those people into the Halloween Town residents. Mm -hmm. He invents Sally to be a pleasure doll. To a wife. <laughs> he, to be his pleasure doll. Uh, but she's like, A, I think of you more as a father. B, you're a disgusting old man. C. I like Jack. I like Jack. Right. Romance between Sally and Jack. Does it work? No. Why not? Because it doesn't make any sense. Because we never see them interact we don't see them interact. We don't see them interact. We, Except we see him boss her around. Yeah, like he does everyone else. 
Right. He, he disregards her feelings, her opinions, treats her like another worker. My theory is that they slept together once. I don't think they I did. I think they slept together I once. I don't... I don't think... Okay, here's what I'm saying. I don't think sex exists I in this world. I think sex exists in this world. Because you see Yugi Boogie get turned on by her leg. And he goes, tickle, tickle, tickle. Which is creepy and weird. Which is creepy and weird, but that means that lust exists. Now, what I'm saying is, they treat each other like a, two people who slept together once. Only because they're the same height. Like, that's it. Like <laughs> They're like, oh, look, we roughly come up to each other's faces. I bet this is compatible. She got all into Jack after that. And She's Jack's like, the pumpkin king, and he doesn't care. He doesn't care. He can sleep with whoever he wants to. The Black Lagoon Lady, either the witches, the behemoth, the thing hiding under your bed, thing hiding under the stairs. Oogie Boogie. Shadow on the Moon at Night. I think he slept with Oogie he Boogie. He probably slept with Oogie Boogie. He's definitely slept with Oogie Boogie. Yeah. Everyone slept with Oogie Boogie. Uh, except for the mayor. Except for the mayor's never slept with ever. He's completely asexual. Yeah. He's completely asexual. Completely. He's an ace character. I stand by that. Yep. Uh, uh, the who when you call, who's there? That is a disembodied voice. That is a disembodied voice. <laughs> doesn't mean it doesn't have needs. I bet the guys in that band sup with everybody. I think the guys in that band are polycule. Which is a hornier town? Halloween town or Christmas town? Christmas town. You think Christmas town is hornier? Yeah. I guess all those elves. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The eternal adults. Elves, yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. just like for so much of the year, they are like forced to build toys for children. I just feel like when they get alone, they don't want to think about like mm. anything to do with kids. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Also, did you see all those elves sleeping in that bed together? All the elves sleep in the bed together. Jack thinks they're all children, but it's just because they're small. They're not humans. They're elves. Uh, like in also, Lord if, of the Rings. if all of the elves that he thought were children were children, there'd be no adults in that town. Right? No, there, there, there's some gray-haired elves, and you see an elf with another elf sitting on its lap, and he's it's reading to the elf. I think those are kids. I think those are still adults. I think that they just get they're just that way. Oh. I think the elves are just like this is how we entertain each other. This is how we entertain ourselves. Maybe the like slightly larger like gray-haired elves are like the the leader. Okay, maybe that. Yeah, maybe they're like the reproducers. No, like, just the they produce. No, I'm just saying that they lay the eggs. Oh, yeah, the elf eggs. They lay That's the what elf the egg. Christmas ornaments are. That's what Christmas ornaments are. There's a whole other continuity here that we're not getting into. <laughs> so, Halloween, none of this story makes sense if you pick it apart. No. Like, none of it makes sense. Because it's, it's not supposed to. The Halloweeners never heard of snow? What? <laughs> like, snow isn't strictly a Christmas thing. It is no. just an existence Unless thing. Unless it is in this universe. Who is dead? Jack says he's dead, but then, like, there's a whole reference to maybe he died at one point. Are the people in Halloween Town dead? We don't know. What does Halloween Town do? We don't know. Why do none of the songs have real endings? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Why does Chris Sarandon suddenly sound like Danny Elfman when he sings? We don't know. Why does Catherine O'Hara play one of the children and also Sally? Never explained. Paul Rubens, pretty good as one of the kids. Uh, Kim Page, great as Oogie Boogie. I love Oogie Boogie. Oogie Boogie's my favorite character. I wish he was in more of the movie. The closing narration in the soundtrack refers to the fact that Jack and Sally have children. Uh, also, the narration on the soundtrack is not the same narration from the movie. I believe it's Patrick Stewart. It may be Patrick Stewart or Anthony Hopkins. One of the, It's a famous actor who does the narration, but only on the album. And I think it's because they recorded the album, but then they wanted it different, and so they just redid I don't, it. I don't think that romance works at all. But does it need to be romance, then? Like, maybe think, they just need to reproduce. Well, I don't think their kids are... Act I don't... I, okay, let me make it very abundantly clear. I don't like the idea of anybody in Halloween Town sleeping with anybody. <laughs> Why not? They're it, adults. They're literally adults. I know, but it doesn't feel right. Okay. It just feels bad especially sally because to me sally is sally i don't know how to describe it she doesn't feel like an actual like functional person like she doesn't feel i know she can make choices on her own like i don't want to infantilize sally right but I, it it doesn't feel like she should <laughs> okay i don't know how to describe it because it feels like she doesn't have nearly as much power as anybody else well that's what movie. i was saying during the movie the romance doesn't work even if they are attracted to each other because he is literally the king of Halloween Town. Now granted, canonically they get married and then she mm -hmm. becomes the queen of Halloween Town. And I guess that's how kings work. Like kings if their kings are the ultimate authority, the only people they can marry are people of lesser power. Right? I guess. I mean depending on 
so here's the final so this is the these are the clo this is the closing of Night Regrets was only included on the soundtrack it's a poem just like in the beginning and finally everything worked out just fine Christmas was saved though there wasn't much time and after that night things were never the same each holiday now knew the other one's name okay all right each holiday not just those. So after this, like a, an envoy from Firecracker Land came over. It like, <laughs> they blew everything up. And though that one Christmas things got out of hand, I'm still rather fond of that skeleton man. So That's this what is it was. Santa Claus. It's supposed. It was originally supposed to be Santa Claus narrating. So many years later, I thought I'd drop in, and there was old Jack still looking quite thin, with four or five skeleton children at hand. Not that he and Sally produced skeleton children. You said these could have been regular kids. They yeah. stripped the skin off of. Playing strange little tunes in their xylophone band, which is like, well, I don't know why. <laughs> no, and wait, I, wait, 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 wait. Are these the skeleton children rescued from Oogie Boogie's land? What skeleton children? Because he has a bunch of skeleton, like... Oh, <laughs> is Jack raising them as his children now? <laughs> maybe. His former pr prisoners? Or maybe it's the skeletons from the tree. Oh, yeah. Are those children? I think those are children. They're little skeletons. Yeah. Yeah. Jack cut them down. He's Finally. like, you know what? It's weird that I've let you stay up here all these years. I'm a skeleton. You guys are skeletons. Come with me. I'll be your papa. Yeah. Okay. I can I can live with that being canon. And I asked old Jack, do you remember the night when the sky was so dark and the moon shone so bright? Every night. When a million small children pretending to sleep nearly didn't have Christmas at all, so to speak? And would, if you could, turn that mighty clock back to that long, fateful night? Now think carefully, Jack. Would you do the whole thing all over again, knowing what you know now, knowing what you knew then? And he smiled like the old pumpkin king that I knew, then turned and asked softly to me, wouldn't you? No, because Santa Claus was tortured by a bug man. That's literally all Santa Claus got out of it. He was tortured by a bug man for hours and almost died. Yep. He learned nothing. He had nothing to learn. Santa Claus... Already a pretty tolerant guy with a pretty good outlook on life. I feel like the fact that all of the other holidays eventually like came to be around each other mm -hmm. is the best case scenario for how that ended. Yeah. I feel like it would have been totally cool as well if all the other holidays were like, no, I don't think we're going to interact with Halloween Town. Not for a while, at least. <laughs> Not for a good long time. Um, did, uh... I wasn't going to say, uh... Which is the most boring town to come visit? Fourth of July town. It has to be Fourth of July. Town. That sounds like my actual nightmare. That's an actual nightmare. I hate yeah. fireworks. <laughs> um, also, do you think Fourth of July town is where George Washington went when he died in this world? I think George Washington is the king of Fourth yeah. of July town. Uh, I don't think there's any like question about that's it. That's where this tale of King George Washington comes. That's why Vandy Vandy was written. That's the tie-in to Vandy <laughs> Vandy, King go. George Washington. <laughs> now we figured it out. So, Guillermo del Toro obviously loves this Henry route. Selleck. And I was wrong. It was, it was, Henry Selleck did do Coraline. I forgot. He did do yeah, Okay, that's what I thought. I say in the, I say in the commentary that Henry Selleck did do Coraline. Of course he did Coraline. That's why the cat looks like a Henry Selleck cat. Yeah, okay. Um, I think they're the same. No, because the, the cat in the Coraline has blue eyes and this one had green eyes. They're, they're, they're related. Or they're it changes cousins. its color depending on what, what land it's in. Uh, Guillermo del Toro obviously loves this movie. Uh, yeah. Guillermo del Toro has obviously worked in stop motion animation and will again. Yeah. He's he's working on, I believe, his isn't his Frankenstein going to be stop motion or something? I don't know. He's doing something again in stop motion. He did the Pinocchio that we saw and talked mm -hmm. about. He and Henry Selleck are friends. They've talked. They've had Q&As and interviews together. Uh, they have a lot of thoughts about things. Uh, I mean, they do. They're ve two very opinionated filmmakers. Mm -hmm. um, Guillermo del Toro, though, it's clear what he would have liked about this movie. Like, I can't think of how, what he wouldn't like about this movie. Yeah. It's literally about a Guillermo del Toro protagonist. Because mm -hmm. he and Tim Burton have similar protagonists in that they're like these sort of monstrous outsiders. Except for, Jack's not super an outsider. He's an outsider to our world, like yeah. to the world at large. Uh, or I, he, I guess he is kind of an outsider in Halloween Town. Yeah. He's an outsider that has power, but he's not like everyone else in Halloween Town until the end when he goes back to being like everyone else in Halloween Town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a Wizard of Oz lesson at the end, which yeah. is don't stray too far from your hometown. You won't like it out there. Yep. Um, but it, it it has like 
I mean, it's not really. It doesn't really have a descent into the underworld because Halloween Town is the underworld. Yeah, it has, I guess it does, it does have at a the end. In the underworld, he does. He, he does literally go goes yeah. down underground. <laughs> he literally goes into a mausoleum. <laughs> That's true. It has the fairy tale thing. Uh, it has. It has. You know the. It the, has musical numbers. Musical just numbers. Just like Pinocchio. Just like Pinocchio. It, ha- it has guns shooting at a symbol of children's joy. It has hand drama. <laughs> he does. Sally's hand literally comes off. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it pretty much punches. It has a set of rules that are followed strictly by inhuman creatures. There you go. It's a Guillermo del Toro It's favorite. about the chaos of non-human being, what non-human beings bring to the human world when they break the rules. But clearly del Toro, it captures a lot of the same feeling of his Pinocchio and things mm-hmm. like that. There's, there, the, the, that sense of like... We're, we've achieved a look and a style that can only be realized through stop motion animation. Yeah. Because this doesn't really work in other formats. I've seen like, the original, uh, if, you, if you read the comics, if you look at the storybooks, these characters are meant to be 3D, anim- like 3D mm-hmm. maquettes. They are not meant to be CGI. You are not meant to be cartoons. They look perfect as the part, actual dolls. The part where Jack, where Zero brings Jack's jaw back and it sort of melds back into his face, that couldn't be done. Yeah, it wouldn't look cool. Yeah. Uh, so this movie had a sequel called Nightmare Before Christmas. I think Oogie Boogie's Revenge. Uh, it was a video game that was written as a movie. Like, it has a plot and mm-hmm. songs. The characters sing songs. Dr. Finkelstein has a song. Most of the songs are just rewritten versions of these songs. Yeah. But these, the Danny Elfman songs. But there's a few originals in there. Mm-hmm. They're sung. It's the same voice cast. The original voice cast. Danny Elfman doesn't return. It's Chris Saranda doing his own singing. Uh, <laughs> Jack is trying to keep Boogie Boogie. Uh, I don't remember what it's about. There's prequel comics about how Halloween Town came to be. There's sequel comics. One's about Zero Goes Missing. They have to find them. There's a there's novels about Sally that are that's a whole new series coming mm-hmm. out. Uh, there's toys and games. There's T-shirts and stuff. None of this existed when I was a kid. No. I saw this movie when it first came out. Took a girlfriend to see it. She hated it. I was a senior in high school. Took another girlfriend to see it. She loved it. These were different I girlfriends thought... at different times. Okay, so what? I thought one of them wasn't your girlfriend. She was my girlfriend eventually. Okay. And then she dumped me for someone. <laughs> We're still good friends. Um, I was obsessed with this movie. Yeah. It punched all my buttons. Mm-hmm. Danny Elfman, Tim Burton, musical. Like, that was it. That's all I needed. Uh, and then it bombed. Like, it kind of it kind of was a disappointment. Uh, how big of a disappointment? I, I, I want to say it wasn't like a... Was it a huge bomb? Or am I just am I just making that up? Was it one of those movies that's like, no, actually, this, this made a lot of money. I made a lot of money. Never mind. Or wait, is that like the total? So this movie's been re-released quite a few yeah. times is the problem. Um, uh, so they keep adding to the original box office. Like, well, it's made a billion dollars over time. So it says it's made 101.2 million US dollars. But that's because it's been reissued so many times. Yeah. On its original release. Yeah. So it cost $18 million to make. Um... They insisted on it being called Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas, and Burton wasn't happy um, because he's like, I don't like being a brand name. Uh, it, it, trying to, I'm trying to find. That's it. Okay. Now, when you watch this movie, it has the Disney castle at the beginning. Uh, Disney it originally made fifty million. It originally made fifty million, so not a huge hit, mm-hmm. um, but a hit. I mean, enough of a hit that justified them like making a video game and stuff. Yeah. Uh, it was originally released uh, as part of as a Touchstone picture. That's right. Now it's right. released as okay. a Disney picture. Originally it was released as Touchstone because Disney thought it was too scary for kids, which is hilarious because this movie, not scary. Um, Except for that part where Jack crawls like a spider. Jack crawls like a spider. But otherwise, uh, decent enough success that they weren't embarrassed, but not a big enough hit to like justify the sequels they kept talking about. Decent enough success for them to have one of their other videos. Which was? Is that Kingdom Hearts? Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. Kingdom Hearts 1 or 2, I can't remember. Why do you remember this, though? Because I was awesome at it. So, I was playing the Halloween Town part of Kingdom Hearts. You were little. Mm-hmm. And I could not beat Oogie Boogie at yeah. the end of the level. So, I left the room. Mm-hmm. And I said, go ahead and play the game if you want to. This is freaking impossible. <laughs> 
I left it. I think I went to the bathroom. <laughs> yep. What happened? I won. How long did it take you? One time. <laughs> you picked up the controller, you beat Oogie Boogie on your first try. Yep. Something I could not accomplish. <laughs> uh, I was not embarrassed. I was so proud of my child. <laughs> Um, and of course, you saw this movie many times I as did, a kid. Yeah. Like this, you sort of grew up with this film. I think mm-hmm. kids do now. It's just a staple. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a classic, and and it bridges Halloween and Christmas, so it you does. can watch it whenever you want. Exactly. And it's that rare three month movie. <laughs> like it gets ha- October, <laughs> you know, November, there is and December. One movie that I have seen more than this one that I watched more than this one as a kid. Corpse Bride. Nope. Princess oh. Mononoke. Oh, you did watch Princess Mononoke. I used a lot. to watch that movie on loop at the house. <laughs> <laughs> Another good movie. Yeah. Uh, so that's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Do you have anything else to add? Um, no, I think we've covered everything pretty much. I want to know, now that you like, you brought it up while we were watching it, I want to know what they think of our monster. Oh, yes. The question on everyone's mind. What do the Halloween Town like, residents think of, like, Freddy Krueger, Pennywise? Did, does the, the swamp monster lady, is she offended by the creature from the Black Lagoon? Right. Or is she like, eh, that's one of my people. Yeah. But, like, they don't have, like, the Freddy Kruegers there. No, they don't they just don't have ha- murderers right. there. Right. They don't have, like... <laughs> yes, they don't have murderers there. They have vampires, I guess. So, I guess they do have murderers They didn't there. say human blood. That's true. And it didn't say most people killed. Yeah. Just most they blood just, drained. They could have just gone to the blood bank. Well, I don't think that counts as draining blood. True. <laughs> do they do other awards? We only saw the blood one. Most... That you hear them give the awards in the background. Uh, I can't remember what the other ones were, but uh, I can only remember most blood drained in a single evening. That's but they give out a bunch of awards because like, now it's time for the awards. Uh, you make wounds ooze and flesh crawl. Let me see. Uh, most blood drained in a single evening. The award that goes to the vampires for most blood drained in a single evening. Uh, and then the next part is. Uh, a second and honorable mention goes to the fabulous Dark Lagoon Leeches. Okay. Um, so she's, and that's it. she's the creature from the Dark Lagoon. Oh, you're right. Because that's a, because that's yeah. a copyrighted phrase. Yeah. Can't say the creature from the Black Lagoon. Yes, so there are other awards. Um, so then the fact that she's the creature from the Dark Lagoon suggests there are other generic horror movie monsters well the vampires the mummy franken Fr- franken whatever his name is finkelstein finkelstein it's kind of the frankenstein creator yeah. and his creations are kind of frankenstein there's a wolf man what is jack a skeleton man <laughs> and like i said you see the scarecrow in the beginning and then jack mm-hmm. comes out dressed as him but it's canonically in the comics there is a pumpkin his name is gourd there's a pumpkin headed man who takes care of the pumpkin patch and raises the jack-o'-lanterns who looks just like that yeah uh uh, he also looks like Merv Pumpkinhead. Is he from like the, the original Pumpkin King who retired? No, the original Pumpkin King who retired is in one of the comics. <laughs> is in the Jack versus Oogie Boogie comic about how they grew up together when we were like lovers or whatever. So, all right, fair enough. Was Oogie Boogie always a giant fly, like sack of sack of bugs? bugs? I don't know, but he used to be very small. He used to be well, smaller than Jack. Well, yeah, because he starts out with this. He doesn't. Uh, like he, you see him absorbing the bugs. That's true. So he clearly grow. Does that? Does he sew more thread on? I don't know how you grow bigger. Does, He's a solid sack. Does he get more adult the more bugs he has? Oh. But no, he can't because when we saw him get disassembled, he didn't revert back to an infant. Right. But if he had just leaked bugs, what would have is happened? Is there is there just like one bug that is was that was the bug at the end just him? Was he the original Oogie Boogie? Yeah. I don't know. We'll never know because Santa Claus murdered him. Yep. Uh so that's it for the Nightmare Before Christmas. We have discussed it and I think our episode's long enough. Yeah. Uh Willow, what is the next movie on the Ecstasy of Influence? We I'll give you a hint. We kind of mentioned it. We kind of mentioned it. I'll give you another hint. It is a story that Guillermo del Toro has made and remade many times. Frankenstein? What? Next time on <laughs> The Ecstasy of Influence, we'll be covering Kenneth Branagh's Mary Shelley's mm. Frankenstein, starring Kenneth Branagh, Helena Bonham Carter, and the guy from Goodfellas. What's his name? Uh, Robert De Niro. <laughs> Good thing of Robert <laughs> De Niro's name. Goodfellas. And the guy from Goodfellas. 
It's directed by the director of Four and that really bad Artemis Fowl movie, Kenneth Branagh, starring Helena Bonham Carter, the star of Tim Burton's Sweeney Todd, Tim Burton's Apes movie, and uh, other Tim Burton things. She's been Did in she play Hella Bellatrix Lestrange? Helen Bellatrix Lestrange. She plays Bellatrix Lestrange, yes. She plays that one character a lot. She does not play that one character in She's in Sweeney Todd. That's what I said. She's in Tim Burton's Sweeney Todd. She's in Tim Burton's Big Fish. She's in, she was Tim Burton's main squeeze until he met another one. And he just met a new one on the set of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. We're so happy that he's now sleeping with another one of his leading ladies. That's Tim Burton. Henry Selleck doesn't play that way. Tim Burton play that ways. Uh, if you haven't seen Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, I recommend it. I enjoyed myself. I thought it was pretty good. It's nice to see Tim Burton enjoying himself. Did you see Wednesday? No. You didn't watch Wednesday? I heard Wednesday was good. You can tell this I don't. Is... I don't watch TV shows anymore. That's true. So you can tell Tim Burton was enjoying himself making it. That's what I really enjoyed about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Again, makes no sense. Story makes no sense. That's Beetlejuice for you. That's Beetlejuice for you. Uh, but otherwise, tune in next time when we cover... Frankenstein. Again. Mar Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Have we covered... Yes, we did cover Frankenstein. <laughs> we haven't covered Dracula. No. We cover a lot of vampires, but never Dracula. Um, so... We covered Frankenstein twice. Several times. We did yeah. Frankenstein, we did Brian Frankenstein, we did Frankenstein versus Godzilla. Or it was Frankenstein versus the world. We did those two. There were two of them. Right. Destroy All Monsters, or whatever it was called. There were two uh, Frankenstein movies we did. And we did the books. And we did the books. So we've done Frankenstein a lot. This is Ken Brown's Frankenstein coming up. If you saw it in the 90s, you know it. If you didn't see it, join the club. No, I've seen it. I saw it. I, I, I actually haven't seen this movie since it first came out. Um, but I own it. I am fully prepared to watch it. And we are going to do that. And we're not going to have to talk over all of the movie this time in order to not get copyright striked. Because nobody cares about Veronica Frankenstein. There we go. It's the movie that never was. So join us next time when we dig up them bones and electrocute that boy and make him rise from the dead. Hopefully nobody's watching this hoping to actually watch Night Before Christmas with us. No, God, no. Because we can't do that. No. Right, right. Too many songs. Too so many until songs. then, I'm Phil. And I'm Willow. And we'll see you when... It's Del Toro time!